Good morning, Dr. Yuneman. Good morning, Mr. Park. Good to meet you, sir. Could you please introduce us yourself briefly? Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Peter Yuneman, and I'm head of the Department of Urology and Pediatric Urology at the University Clinic in Schleswig-Holstein here in Kiel. And uh, our specialty, particularly my specialty, is robotic surgery, mm -hmm. all kinds of, mm -hmm. so kidney, bladder, mm -hmm. prostate. May I ask you how, why you choose a urology as your specialty? Yeah, I, I, it's pretty simple. When I was a child, I was always interested in getting, getting things done. So I was, uh, we call it bastern, that means that you put things together and you create something new. On the other hand, I was very interested all my life in technical technology, so optics, etc. And the best to fit into, because I wanted to do something with my hands, mm -hmm was surgery. Uh, so which kind of surgery should I choose? Mm. And um, I decided, well, maybe it's urology because you have a lot of technical equipment. Mm -hmm. You have a cystoscope, you can do percutaneous procedures, you have laparoscopy, mm -hmm. and then, of course, the robotic is just fantastic. And I think it fit very well. And another thing is an important thing one, um, and that's the endourology and also all the x-rays. I don't know if you do that in, in Korea. We do our x-ray studies by ourselves. Oh. So in Germany, the urologist is doing the interventional radi um, uh, radiology. Mm -hmm. So all the diagnostics are done by the urologist himself. Mm -hmm. Even putting in stents, etc. of course. I think it's the same in Korea, but I don't know if you, like in the States, for example, they don't do their diagnostic uh, radiology. And that is different in Germany. So that's why I, I choose it. So how long have you been uh, as a practice, as a urologist. Jesus, how long? It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I started in 82. I worked together with Emil Tanago uh -huh. and with Tom Lu and Rick Schmidt. Tom Lu, wow. Yeah. yeah, I was working, of course, on andrology. Mm -hmm. I was working also on erectile dysfunction mm -hmm. and I also worked on, um, on incontinence and particular neurourology. Mm -hmm. So one second profession is neurourology. Neuro so you worked for four, three years there, which means that you started your practice around 86. 85, 86, 86, 86 yes, 86, absolutely 86. right. It's almost 30 years now. Yeah. So all through those 30 years, I heard, and I, I can see that you successfully built a huge kingdom of urology of North uh, Germany, North part of the Germany, am I correct? Uh, no, you are not correct because <laughs> I started in the southern part of Germany oh. when I was senior registrar and because that's the way it, it goes. I think it's the same all over the world that you start as a resident, uh -huh. you get your education mm -hmm. and I had a very good teacher. I had many teachers. Mm -hmm. I had Emil Tanago, Hans-Jörg Melchior who is very famous in Eurodynamics in Germany and the other one was Peter Alken mm -hmm. and he is one of the founders of percutaneous nephrolithal apexy. Oh. And he was, he was, of course, also my teacher. Oh. And uh, Frank Hinman Jr. Mm -hmm. was also one of my teachers. And I switched departments eight, 13 times. 13 times? Yes, because I wanted to learn more. Uh. And I went to this guy, to that guy. But my major, my major uh, position was, and the, where I stayed the longest, was with Peter Alken in Mannheim. Mm -hmm. And that's in the southern part of Germany. Uh. And in 2001, I was elected for taking over the chairmanship here in Kiel. Ah, and so then we build up, that's right, and then we build up this Northern uh, Excellence Center. Wow, so you come over here 2001, then it's... 18 years. 18 years. Throughout the 18 years, you run the courses and uh, had the residents and the fellows and senior partners. Yes. Yeah, senior surgeons and... Yeah, with the senior surgeons, you see it's somewhat different here in Kiel in comparison to the rest of Germany. Mm -hmm. In your country, I'm sure it's like in the States, mm -hmm. you have a department. Mm -hmm. And I started this kind of department structure and strategy in 2005. It was, it was the, ch the, the head, mm -hmm. he did everything. Ah. And I said, it's impossible to mm -hmm. do everything. You have to focus to become really good. Mm -hmm. You have to give up and you have to focus on whatever you are interested in. Ah. In, the, in earlier days, mm -hmm. I was, basically from the research side as well as from the clinical part, I was basically doing andrology, mm -hmm. 
neurourology and incontinence. Mm -hmm. And then of course, once I became chairman over here, I had to switch to oncology because this is the biggest part and the most important one and which gives most of the money for a hospital and for a department. And the decision was made by myself, but I gave up, for example, pediatric urology. Wow. Mrs. Melcher took over mm -hmm. and uh, she is a pediatric surgeon mm -hmm. who is working in my department. Dania, who is doing laparoscopy and uh, robotic surgery together with me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's another one who is doing it and also all the prosthesis. Mm -hmm. I gave up also the, um, all the, and, uh, the andrology part. So he is focusing on it, mm. and he is, as you know, mm. he was, he is doing a very good job, and he is uh, getting better and better. And I let them do because it's their part; they are working on their own, you can say. But because of the culture back then, and there was nothing like that, you were able to hold whatever you want. Why did you let them have it? Because that. For, for two, basically, for two major reasons. One is I realized that I was unable to read all the important literature for everything. Secondly, if you do pediatric surgery, it's completely different from doing surgery in, in, a, in, a, in an adult or even in an elderly mm. person or patient. Mm. So I, I realized I'm not able to get excellent skills and work on these skills because surgery is continuous learning uh, if I do everything. And then I said, I have to give up. And that's why I did it. And it worked pretty well. I guess, you know, it's a perfect example how we can be a good, good surgeon. Because uh, being a good surgeon, uh, I guess the patient is always our priority, right? Sure. We are here to deliver the best result we can. We can't say it's a perfect result, but we have to keep trying to deliver them something as close as a perfect. To do so, you let yourself let go of some part of your professions so that the others can take charge of it, so that they can give a better result to the patient. Can I put it this way? Yes, absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also good for yourself because, because you can focus on something and you, code, you can, can go into this subject very deep ah. with reading, with trying new things, with changing your uh, surgical um, strategy. Mm. Very, very often, I would say maybe 80% of the, the surgery is always the same. Mm. The same approach, mm -hmm. the same strategy. Mm -hmm. But the other 20%, mm -hmm. you have to know what to do in this particular situation because it becomes difficult. And if you just do it once a week or, every, or once a month, every two months, it's not good. You cannot become an excellent guy. You see, it's like I, I, I'm coming from, from sports, from track and field. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I used to become or to be a marathon runner wow. when I was young. Mm -hmm. And um, I was good enough at least to be asked if I want to run for, the German, for Germany. But then I had to give up medicine mm -hmm. and just doing sports anyway. Uh -huh. I thought about it for two weeks and then I said, no, <laughs> I'd rather go to the United <laughs> States and do research. <laughs> but it would be the same if you say somebody who is running 100 meters pretty fast, you say in bold, that you ask him if he can run the marathon faster than anybody else. Mm -hmm. It's impossible right. because the skills are completely different mm -hmm. and the physiognomy is completely different. Mm -hmm. So everything is different and it's the same in surgery, even in the small uh, yeah, area of urology, but I believe urology is huge and big. I mean, I'm, I'm very surprised because uh, whenever they ask me how to be a good surgeon in that specific field, I always told them the density of the surgical experience is important. Yeah. Doing a, a hundred cases in, in a year or doing a hundred cases in two months gives you a total different experience because of the density. You are immersed totally immersed with the, that surgery. So it is, it is the point when you, your surgical skills really improves. That's what, I, that's what my belief is. And I never thought that I will hear it from you. <laughs> yeah, but you see, there is probably, it's not a mistake, but you have to be careful. If you do 100 cases in two months, mm. you might be so busy right. that you are not able to think about new approaches, sure. to read the literature, which might be interesting, mm -hmm to join meetings, which is very important, particularly when they are 
live surgical uh, mm -hmm. meetings mm -hmm. to see others how they do it and you say Poo, good idea mm -hmm. I could also do it I can improve even get shorter and I shorten the time in the OR etc etc so a mixture of both but you are absolutely right you need a certain yeah, a certain amount of surgicals, uh, surgical uh, procedures in order to become really good or, and to stay at that level. Actually, this is the reason why I, I can't stop doing interviews because every time I do the interviews, I learn, I learn so much, like the wisdoms of their, I mean, uh, out of their own experiences and uh, deeper thought, I would say, insights of this field. Uh, as a doctor is a, a life learning job. We, the moment we stop learning, that's the moment we'll die. That's how I... How then I you should stop surgery, definitely. <laughs> because you probably do any harm to the patient. You see, I'm 63 now, 63 years old. And um, a couple of years I decided when we started with our robotic uh, program, this is something more or less I was waiting for. Ah. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I said, well, this is exactly what you always wanted to do. Mm -hmm for the rest of your life mm. and uh, so you have to be dedicated mm. to become really good you yourself have to be dedicated to whatever you do mm. whether it's the penile implant whether it's a sphincter implant or whether it's robotic surgery mm. it make, makes no difference mm. it's just that you love it mm. and then you never ask how long the day takes mm -hmm. how long the surgery takes you just want to f actually finish this case the best way you can do it and this always needs also some improvement and that's why it is important to speak to people who have a lot of experience like you in this special field you are working on and to see how you do it mm -hmm. because as an experienced surgeon you see ex immediately mm -hmm. what he is doing different mm -hmm. and that makes it so nice.